Today we're going to learn how to write and balance chemical reactions and you're going to use this all the way through chemistry. First of all, we need to go over the states of matter. There are four states of matter that are going to be written in chemical reactions. First, there's S. S stands for solid, like a penny, or powder that's dissolved in another substance. Next, we have L for liquid. Liquid would not represent something dissolved in something, it would represent something that's pure, such as water or ethanol is an example of another liquid. G stands for gas, so helium, hydrogen, things like those would be gases. And last, we'd have AQ, and that means dissolved in water. For example, if you dissolve copper sulfate in water, it turns blue. All right, let's do our first reaction. Let's go to the reaction we did. We did this in lab. We took aluminum and we put it in a solution of copper chloride. And then that produced, so we use an arrow to separate what we started with and what we finished with, aluminum chloride and copper. Notice we write the correct formulas. It was copper 2 chloride we started with, so it's CuCl2. And aluminum has a charge of plus 3, chlorines minus 1, so we write that as AlCl3. So you always write the formulas the way that you would write them that we learned in the last unit. Next, we know that the things we begin with are reactants and the things that we finish with are called products. So it's important that the reactants, that you separate those two, and that's sort of the big thing about a chemical reaction is that elements are rearranged. Now the other thing that we learned here is something called uh, the law of conservation of mass. We never lose elements, they're just rearranged. So let's go ahead and put those uh, uh, the states of matter in. So we want to do that to identify what states we have here. So let's start. So that we had aluminum, and I think you guys realize aluminum would be solid. And then we had copper 2 chloride, and that would be aqueous. So those would be those states. Now let's go to the products. Over here we had aluminum chloride and copper. Aluminum chloride was dissolved in water, so that would be aqueous. And then they, we produced a reddish substance, which was solid copper. The last thing we want to do is show that, that we start with the same number of atoms and types of atoms, and we end with the same number and types of atoms, and that's called the law of conservation of mass. And we do that by balancing the reaction. Now, the way you balance a reaction is you change the coefficients in the front of the substance. So there's four coefficients here. There's a coefficient in front of aluminum, copper to chloride, aluminum chloride, and solid copper. That's the only place we can write a number. You can never change these subscripts. Subscripts are like the 2 and the 3. You can only change the coefficients, the number in the front. So how do we do that? Well, an easy thing to start with this would be chlorine. We see on one side there's three chlorines, and on the other side there's two chlorines. So a number that both of those go into is 6. So what we do is we say 3 times 2 is 6. So we put a 2 here. And then we know that we also need to even out the number of chlorines on this side, so 2 times 3 is 6, so we put a 3 here. So now we have 6 chlorines on each side. Now the last thing we want to do is balance out the aluminums, and so we put a 2 in front of this aluminum, and then we balance out the copper, so we put a 3 in front of this copper. And so written neatly, it looked like this, and now we can check and make sure it's balanced. We have 2 aluminums and 2 aluminums. We have 3 coppers, three coppers. And now you need to distribute the three and say three times two is six chlorines and two times three is six chlorine. So we're balanced. Excellent. That's exactly what we want to write. So we want a couple of things here. Write the correct formulas of each substance. Make sure we include states. Correctly identify reactants and products. And then at the end, balance it. Let's try one more. Before we do, I want to mention something called diatomic elements. There's a group of seven elements that are diatomic, which means they exist together. Now, I'll give you two different ways to remember this group of diatomic elements. One is the saying Brinkelhoff. Brinkel is actually the elements. So we have bromine, iodine, nitrogen, chlorine, hydrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. So what that means is all those substances, if they appear by themselves in a, a gas or solid form, in a pure form, they will be diatomic or there will be two of them bonded together. So what that means, what that would look like is if we had one bromine, it would be share electrons and be attached to another bromine. Now we'll learn about bonding in another chapter, so you don't really have to know that part now. There's a second way to remember this group of seven elements, and that is the way, the way they're located in the periodic table. We actually have 
Six of them right here, we have nitrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. And what's sort of cool is they make almost a number seven here, but there's only six. And then for the seventh, we have to go over to hydrogen, and that gives us a seven. So hydrogen plus nitrogen plus oxygen plus fluorine plus chlorine plus bromine plus iodine give us our seven diatomic elements. Okay, let's do one more example of a reaction to balance. And this I did, I'm doing as a demo in class. So we're going to take solid potassium and drop it in liquid water. So those are the reactants. Now when we do that, the water turns pink because I put an indicator called phenolphthalein in there. Now the pink in the water would indicate that we formed a base. A hydroxide polyatomic ion is often an indicator of a base, and so one of the products is potassium hydroxide. Now it also bubbled and a little bit of a flame was produced, so the, the bubbling was actually hydrogen gas, and that's diatomic because it's one of the Brinkelhoff elements. And so next thing we want to do is write states for all these. So let's, the potassium we said was solid, and those are reactants, and these are products. Potassium we said was solid, water was liquid, and those produce potassium hydroxide dissolved in water, so we'd say aqueous, and hydrogen as gas. Now this one's a little bit more complicated to balance because we're going to do something different than we did last time. Notice we look at, by inspection, notice one potassium as a reactant, one potassium as a product. So that's balanced. So if we notice one oxygen as a reactant, one oxygen as a product, those are balanced. The problem is the hydrogens aren't balanced. So I would recommend if there's any element that appears multiple places in the reaction, I would balance that last. And then I would say I'd force it to balance. And here's what I'm going to do. Notice here I have two hydrogens. Over here I have three. Now there's a way to make this side two hydrogens, and that's by putting a fraction of one half here. Now notice when we balance reactions, we never really want to use fractions, but that fraction I'm going to write there, I'm going to only leave there for a second, because what I'm going to do is now I'm going to get rid of that fraction. Because right now it's balanced, we're just using a fraction. We have one potassium, we have on each side, we have one oxygen on each side, and here we have two hydrogens, and if you count, we have one hydrogen here, and one half times two gives us one hydrogen here, so a total of two hydrogens. So this is indeed balanced, we just don't want to use fractions. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of that fraction. So I'm going to take the entire thing, and I'm going to multiply it by two. So that would give me two potassiums, two waters, two potassium hydroxides, and then just one hydrogen. So we'll put a one there. So I'm going to show you that, again, written neatly. And we'll do it, go over it again and show that it's balanced. So there's two potassiums, two potassiums, four hydrogens, two times two is four, and then two distributed to this hydrogen here gives us two, plus two here gives us four. So the hydrogens are indeed balanced. And distribute the two in front of the water to the ox oxygen, and that gives us two oxygens. And the two distributed to this one gives us two oxygens. So this in, is indeed balanced. So our reactants, the number of elements and substances we have as reactants, equal the elements that we find as products. And so this is balanced, and we have states, and all the formulas are written correctly, so this is perfect. This is exactly how you want to write and balance chemical reactions. So you have problems on this on website, and you have a handout that's on Canvas. Work on those. Good luck. Let me know if you have any questions. I usually get at school at 7.30 in the morning in room 173. Have a great day.